Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at OptionAlpha.com and in today's video we're going to go through the Stock Hacker here on Thinkorswim. This is a really cool tool that you can use to start doing a lot more in-depth and advanced scanning for possible securities if you're not using a predefined watch list or if you want to start using some technicals or fundamental filters. So we're going to be going through this in detail. Um, just to let you guys know, we are now over to our live platform. So I know the first couple of videos in this course, like I said, we set everything up on a paper platform just because we didn't want to mess with what we already had existing on the live platform. Um, but you can see now from the last video, which was doing a lot of the chart setup, that we are now on the live platform. Everything that we set up uh, on the paper platform is now the exact same on the live platform. We'll continue to basically use the live platform here since it has more real trades and obviously real data for my own trading and stuff that we can set up in the future as we keep going through this course. Um, one side note here before we get into the stock hacker, in the last video we showed you the different styles that we had. Uh, like I said, we use a couple different styles here at Option Alpha. We use a base style, which is just uh, no studies at all, a base with our IV code that we had from the last one. And then we do have our long and uh, technical studies from our research report signals and same thing with our short technical studies. So we do separate those out into two different um, chart styles because the technical indicators that work well for a long setup are different that are different from the ones that work well for a short setup. So we do actually break those out into two different versions. Like I said, in today's video, we're going to be going through the stock hacker. This is in the scan tab and then the stock hacker sub tab of the Thinkorswim platform. Uh, this is a really cool feature, very, very powerful. Uh, you can see when you open it up at first, it kind of defaults in here, a bunch of different stuff. We're going to go through this in detail here in this video and kind of show you um, how this whole thing is set up. So the first thing that you can do inside the Stock Hacker is you can scan in different categories or options or watch lists. Uh, this is actually pretty cool. So right away, you can start to filter out your potential universe of trades by doing all symbols, just stocks, indexes, futures, funds, um, anything that's optionable, which is what we usually end up doing, uh, NYSE stocks, NASDAQ stocks, etc. You can also use your personal watch list like uh, Option Alpha, or you can use a public watch list like uh, any cash settled or free ETFs, etc. Right? So there's so many different things you can do. We usually just do all optionable securities because we just want to get a lay of the land of anything that has the potential to trade options on since that's what we do. Now you can intersect this with something else. So you can say, okay, show me all optionable securities and anything that's in our own personal watch list. So within Option Alpha itself. So we have a pre-screen watch list that we kind of go off of for all of our trading. So now you can start to see that that's in there. We can intersect anything optionable with Option Alpha. Obviously it's all the same, but if you had just a different watch list, you can, again, you can see you can intersect this with anything that you want. Um, so in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just toggle off all of these um, filters for now, just so I can explain these and then we can add them in. There's a couple different ways you can now filter and scan for stuff. The first is you can filter for the stock, okay? So this is going to be for things like price, volume, high, low, etc., right? You can also add a filter for the underlying options. Now this will only work if you're checking stuff that has optionable securities, right? So if a stock does not have options traded on it, then this will basically return zero results, won't be any help to you. The third way that you can do is you can add actual study filters, so technical study filters. This is really cool. This is some of the stuff that we teach inside of our course with the signals report, which is how you can basically set this up to auto-populate and to let you know and give you alerts whenever uh, a study indicator is hit or a signal is created. And then the fourth way that you can do it is with a fundamental indicator on the company itself. So things like market cap, PE ratios, yield, etc. Okay, so a lot of stuff in here. So first thing we're going to add is we're going to add a stock filter. You can then, again, go down here on the Dropbox and you can see all the different things that you can use uh, to filter out. And so there's a lot of different things. Again, I think the idea here is simplicity is best. You can do so many different things in here. But what we usually like to do is do a close price. Uh, somewhere between like 10 or $20 and higher, right? Now, the reason that we filter that out, and you can see, you can either type it in, so we can just say, hey, you know, $20 or higher, right? Exactly $20. Or you can use and move this toggle and it'll change the whole thing, right? The reason that we do this in, you know, 20-ish dollars um, high is that we just generally want to avoid anything that's penny stock territory, right? Now, it goes all the way up to a max of, you can see, $17.35, which might be like a price line or something like that. So we just leave it open because you know it doesn't really matter for those those higher end securities. You can add another stock filter if you want to. If you want to add multiple stock filters, 
features, you just click add or just remove them on the right side. So maybe you want to say, okay, you know what? I also want to do market cap. Um, so I want to do, you know, companies that are at least, you know, I don't know, 20, 30 million dollars or more, right? So, or, or uh, 31, so like 31 billion dollars or more market cap, right? So like big companies um, as far as that's concerned. So you can add that in there. It's up to you if you want to do that or not. Another study that we can add um, is an options filter. So let me just take this off for a second. We can add an options filter, which is really cool because what we can do is actually filter by a bunch of different things like days to expiration. So only show me things that are, let's say 19 days, to or only show me stocks that have you know expirations in this period that also meet other requirements. So 19 days to expiration to 129 days to expiration, whatever the case is, right? Uh, we can also show um, by open interest. So we can say, okay, generally show me stuff that's got you know really good open interest, maybe over a you know couple thousand, right, to seven thousand, doesn't really matter. Uh, we can also show me anything that's got really good return on capital, right? So if the return on capital is at least 7% to anywhere between, let's say, I mean, you don't want to go to these extremes because those are really out of the money options, but, you know, 7 to, let's say, 15% or something like that, right? So you can filter out by those. Um, you can filter by volume, percentage of the money, out of the money. I mean, so many different things here that you can filter um, as far as the options go. Now, this isn't as powerful just to be totally, totally honest with you guys on the option side because it's going to search all options for all different price ranges and all different um, expiration periods. So even though something may turn up here and look on the outside scan wise to be really good, it may not end up being a really good trade because of low liquidity or low open interest. I mean, there's a bunch of different things in here. So please, please, please use this with a grain of salt. Okay. I do not use this for a lot of scanning for options. I'm just showing you they have the ability to do that. Another one that you can do is uh, adding a study filter. Now, this is really cool because, again, this is where you can go in here and you can add a bunch of study filters. You can also add candlestick patterns, chart patterns, etc. Um, again, popular ones are like MACD, even though it doesn't backtest well. But you can say, okay, I want to study in here to scan for any MACD that has crossed from positive to negative, right? So basically a bearish move. And you can set up your lengths and your time periods to be whatever they are, right? And then so as soon as you do that and you hit scan, it'll show you anything that's had basically a bearish move in MACD. So you got for solar, uh, Google, IYR, right? Now these are all populating because they also intersect with our watch list and have optionable security. So this is a very short list of things that you can potentially look at for a new trade. Now again, MACD is not a good indicator. I'm just using that as an example here. You can use something a little bit better. Uh, but it just shows you, you know, how many different things you can put in here. You can also stack and layer on top of your other filters, right? So you could say, okay, I want ADX to cross below whatever. Okay, scan, right? And see if you find any results. In this case, no results, right? <clears throat> for what you wanted. So maybe it was something different that you wanted. So let's do scan I and mean, you can just, you know, repopulate these and change them and, you know, see if any results come up. Again, no results come up. I'm just now doing this on the fly, obviously, so you can see um, how it kind of works. So you can add and layer these in as much as you want. Another one that you can add is a fundamental filter. So um, book value per share, the current ratio, dividend yield, uh, earnings per share, gross margin. I mean, like anything you want to talk about on the um, fundamental side, it can definitely be in there. Uh, so that you can see, you know, what that ends up being, right? Um, a popular one is dividend yield, right? So you can see, okay, which, you know, stocks are basically paying the best dividend, right? And you can kind of scan and say, okay, I want anything, you know, three plus, right? Okay, well, there you go. There's the ones that are paying, you know, dividends that are 3% plus yield on an ongoing basis, right? So very, very easy to, to find, you know, kind of securities like that. Again, not so helpful for the option side of things, but it is in there as a potential, you know, possibility. Uh, one of the things that we often do in here, if you uh, set up a scan, is you can actually save these scans and you can load them as uh, personal scans that you've done. So like in our case, we have one that we just kind of set up here so you can see. Um, just as a sample, and this is just an RSI one, you could do like a stock close above 25, market cap of a billion dollars or more, and then you set up whatever RSI you know indicator you want. Again, you can save these, and right on here, I know it's cut off a little bit on the screen, but you can save these scans, and then you can preload them into different ones. So again, I can just set up one that I just use as an example uh, to do RSI. And again, you can then go ahead and hit scan, and you can see there's 29 results here, okay? So this one is searching everything 
uh, that might be possible that has not only an RSI crossover, but within these stock parameters. So notice how you can kind of layer on top studies and stocks, or you can add option filters in here. It's actually very, very powerful and dynamic how you can kind of use this this platform to your advantage. Now again, we do not use that many scanning capabilities because we built our own watch list software on Option Alpha that kind of helps us filter out IV and, and mainly scan by IV, but using some technical indicators is some stuff that we do. We do not trade just solely based on technicals, but it is a component that we use. Um, and sometimes we'll set up scans to go ahead and you know kind of filter through our top three main indicators that we use. So hopefully this has been really helpful. Again, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section right below. As always, if you found this helpful, please consider sharing it online, help spreading the word about what we're trying to do here at Option Alpha. And until next time, happy trading.